Oh no, we live? Are we and live? we're live. Here we are at Learning Live and what I like to call America's children's book author and illustrators. Today we have coming back Ralph Massiello, wonderful illustrator Ralph Massiello, who has a line of drawing books that are just terrific. And Ralphie illustrated, for those of you who might forget, Ralphie illustrated the Extinct Alphabet book, a book I'm really proud of. He illustrated the Dinosaur Alphabet book. He illustrated the Icky Bug Alphabet book. This is my first kid's book uh, ever. It's our bestseller. He illustrated the Icky Bug Counting book. He illustrated the Skull Alphabet book. And people say to me, you know, of all the books you wrote, what book are you most proud of? I think the Skull is right up there in my top three That's books. That's my, my absolute books favorite of, of all the books I've done with that you. That was a great collaboration, the Skull book. And authors and illustrators sometimes never get to meet each other. But Ralph and I know each other. We work together as a team. Whenever we worked on a book, we ha actually haven't worked on a book together for 20 years. Ralphie started doing his own drawing books, and he did just a terrific job. Hey, Ralphie, hold yeah. up the uh, the um, uh, my favorite cover you've ever done, the uh, dragon cover. All right, hey, let me kids, down here and grab it. When I think of children's books, and I think if I was – Six years old, seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, ten years old. This would be my favorite cover. Look at that cover. Oh my God. And you drew all those dragons, right? Yeah. Front and back. I don't know today if you're gonna have time to draw a dragon. Yeah, I'm I was draw a dragon. By the way, like in it. the background today we have Jamie in Texas and we have Mary Alice in Connecticut helping us work on Zoom. Uh Ralph and I are busy, and we don't really know how to do all that technical stuff. We call them our secret weapons. So, it's Ralphie, so I was hoping a dragon, while he's blowing fire out, maybe you could draw that eating Mary Alice or maybe eating Cook, Jamie. Cooking Jamie on the <laughs> – yeah. well, right, maybe we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how the drawings I go. I brought this book. Ralphie did the frog alphabet book, and Ralphie also painted uh, one of my the favorite yucky covers, the Yucky Reptile book. So today we have Ralph Massiello, and the other day he drew really simple things for kids. Today we call this, are we calling this Ralph Advanced Session? This is going to be a little more advanced. I'll, I'll start off with one that's a little more simple, and then we're going to get towards more difficult towards towards the end. By the way, these are my two brand new books. Um, this one, I love the Alien book, Ralph. I just it, love it. Yeah, this one came out in September, and then this one just came out March 17th, which is kind of bad timing with the coronavirus and stuff but uh because it's a, a coloring book it, it seems to be doing pretty well because uh, ralphie people just be coloring. do you think your fans think you're an alien like could I, you be an alien I, illustrator oh, that was planted on earth i actually believe i'm an alien so yeah <laughs> so um, um I, by I, the way someone named chloe says hi someone named kylie says hey um merit m from texas Merit says he's in texas well, I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm actually in South Boston. They call it Southie. They have a song here called Southie is my hometown. So I'm in South Boston. And Ralph, where are you today? Where are you sitting I, I, right now? I moved uh, from Connecticut back to Massachusetts. And I'm actually in Charlton, Massachusetts, which is kind of central Massachusetts, right in the, right in the center of the state. Yeah. yeah kind of near where I, where I grew up. Very good. You're in Chelton. That's great. I'm in Charlton. Uh, Adeline, Adeline says hi. I don't know you kids. You have these like one syllable words. Can't you like maybe do two words? Yeah. Like, Well, Texas is two syllables. <laughs> how about, how are you, uh, Ralphie? What are you going to do today? I don't know. I'm By the way, funny. the only people that call me Ralphie are Jerry Pallotta and my mom. <laughs> Is that right? Your mom yeah. calls you Ralphie? Yeah, my mom calls me Ralphie. Uh, Susan from Colorado says, good morning. Fifth graders will love it. And Susan says, get some paper ready, students. Yep. Get some paper Linda ready. Edwards, that was Susan Hutchins. Linda Edwards, she says, good morning, Jerry and Ralph. Uh, hello from Toronto, Canada. And there you go. Okay, okay, so, okay, so what I'm, I'm going to do, Jerry, is I'm, I'm going to start off with a stegosaurus. Pretty simple stegosaurus. Um, for those of you that have not been here with me, I'm going to turn my, uh, my webcam over to my easel in my little studio here. And my easel is actually a six-foot folding table. 
And I showed this before in the other videos. And if you want to go back and look at the, the, these videos, uh, you can see that I showed how to fold down the legs of a six foot folding table. You stand it up tall and then you tape the paper to it. And so there is my, my easel right there. By I'm the way, Ralph, Ryan says, I am so excited. I'm so excited too. That's four words. That's good. And Caden says, what's up? Good. Let's see if I can get good better job. light on this thing. Um, in my it test, looks great. It looks okay? It looks great. Okay. All right. So let me uh, straighten it out a little bit. Maybe pull this a little forward. You guys can still hear me okay? Yep. You're great. All right. So my six-foot folding table standing up on end. And the first one we're going to do is a stegosaurus. So get your... I got to use a marker. You guys can use a pencil. If you make a mistake, feel free to erase if you want. Um, the stegosaurus is going to, the tail is going to be up here. It's going to kind of go down and over a hill. So I think of going down, over a hill, and then back down a hill. So with your finger on your paper, without using your pencil, just kind of go like this. Okay, there's where the tail is. There's where the back is. And there's where the, where the neck is. And the head's going to be here. So if you figure it out before you start drawing, you can kind of plan out where your drawing is going to go so it doesn't go off the page. So I'm going to go down, over hill, and back down a hill. So right here, we're going to go down a hill, over a hill, and then back down a hill. So it kind of looks like over a hill and back down a hill. Now we're going to go and make the head. And what we're going to do is going to make a line that curves around like this. So make a line going around and like that. And that's going to be the mouth. So give it a little smile. There's a little smile on the end there. I don't know if you can see that. Then I'm going to give it a chin, give it a little bit of a chin, which is like a little bit of a backwards letter C, just a little bit of a chin right there. And then the jawbone is going to go over this way and around like this. So your jawbone goes down and then forward. So you can actually go like down then forward like this if you want. Down and forward. So there's your jawbone of your stegosaurus. And you can make a simple little I in here. I'm going to make a little letter V with a little eyeball in there. And I'll put a little nostril on the end. So there's my little stegosaurus's head. So you get the tail over the back the neck and the head. All right, so then, then we're gonna go way- Hey, Ralphie, Ralphie yeah. how am I doing? You look great. It looks like one of your cousins. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna go to the end here. And we're gonna go down like this. This is gonna be the tail. So it's gonna look like an upside down letter V kind of, but it's gonna get wider. And where this goes up, this is gonna kind of stop. So you're gonna go down. And right about here, you're gonna stop. <clears throat> and then under the under the jaw, we're gonna go back this way a little bit to where it starts going up this way. We're gonna go down and stop like that. And these are where the legs are gonna be. They're gonna be right here. We're gonna add something on the bottom here and the bottom there. So what I like to do back here is to make a curving line that touches this and then turn it into like a letter Y. And then this one curves this way, smaller, and make a little Y, like a little crease where the leg turns. So it's like a big letter Y and a small letter Y. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so now we're gonna go, the back leg is gonna go this way and the front leg is gonna go this way. So make a line going this way and a line going this way. How you doing, Jerry? There you go, you're getting it, my friend. And then we're gonna make the bottoms of the feet. Now this one is gonna go this way and this one's gonna go back this way. So we're gonna go forward, make a curve for the toes. And this one's going to make a little curve where the toes is going to go backwards. So this one curves like a, like a, kind of like a skate. And this one's going to curve and go backwards. 
And then you're going to make the back of the knee here and the front of the knee here. So this one's going to go up and then in. So it goes up and then in. And then this one's going to go forward and then up. And if you look right here where the tail is, imagine this line goes behind that leg, droops down, and comes back up. That's going to be like the belly. And you can make these look like letter Y's too if you want to make some creases in there. You can even add extra creases if you want, like it's wrinkled. A little kneecap here, back of the kneecap there. Put some toenails on it. The legs on the other side, because they're four legs, obviously, you're just going to go down and then in. So you're going to kind of hide this one behind there, down and then in like a small little letter L. And then this is going to go down and then in kind of like a small little letter L. So you see the other legs, other legs on the other side. Everybody got that? Okay, then um, what I want to do is make some wrinkles going across. So way back here, we're going to make a wiggly little line going down, kind of hiding behind that leg. And this is going to wrinkle across here and then wrinkle across there. And to make it look like more wrinkles where they, where they wave up and down, you can make lines kind of going down, kind of like this. So you get some lines that kind of look like wrinkles. How you doing? Nice job, Jerry. You should start illustrating your own books now. <laughs> okay, so now the, the next part is we're gonna do the, the plates on the back. I kind of think of them as like upside down diamonds or upside down triangles. I'm going to start with the biggest one, right at the top of the back here. We're going to make like an upside down kind of triangle that curves in. And then they're going to get smaller as they go to the head and smaller as they go to the tail. So you go upside down diamond shape, upside down triangle or diamond shape. And they're going to get smaller uh, this way. And don't make them perfect. They could be broken. They could be chipped. And once you have those done, there's another set of plates on the other side and they alternate a little bit. So you're going to see like an upside down letter V in between these. So upside down letter V, 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 upside down letter V. So you get your plates. And then the, the, Spikes on the tail, make four of them. One, two, three, four. And you could put some polka dots or something on or stripes. I like to have mine kind of going downhill. Like it's getting old, so it's going downhill. Make a cliff or something. You could put a mountain in the background. And I like to put a little smoke coming out of my mountain. And maybe a volcano uh, is erupting, but now a meteor is coming in too. And then make sure you sign your name, Ralph. Mashed potatoes and gravy, 2020, Ralph Massiello. And uh, last week I talked about a copyright symbol. It's a C with a circle around it. That means you can't copy that without my permission, but I give you permission. Okay, so the copyright law, so while you guys are finishing up, the copyright law that existed since 1909 changed in 1978. Anytime you create an original piece of artwork and you've not copied somebody else's, it is instantly copywritten. It's protected by law. It's called statutory copyright law. People tell me, oh, but you have to pay for copyright. No, that's not true. You own your copyright if it's original artwork. What you're talking about is uh, when you register your copyright with the Library of Congress. Jerry, you want to say anything before we uh, go to the next one? Jerry's mic, uh, mic is muted. Jerry, mic's muted. Aiden, 
Caden checked in and Caden says, you make it look so simple. And well, Markham it, says, good work, Ralph. Thank you. And uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but it says, the only students invited to join the Zoom are the fifth grade students in White Oak ISD, Texas. Other teachers Jerry, or students. Jerry, that's, you don't have to say that one out loud. If anything, go look at what Susan <laughs> Hutchinson said about the lady dogs. Sorry. It says, uh, Susan says, uh oh, I'm better at ladybugs. So I guess the stegosaurus is a little tougher. Yeah. There we go. Well, all right. Now we're going to do an owl. And an I owl, do this right. one for my friend, Jane Yolen, who wrote a book called Owl Moon. And I always love to draw an owl. Hold on a second. I love to draw an owl in honor of Owl Moon. So if you're ever reading the book Owl Moon, you can maybe draw an owl to go along with the uh, reading Owl Moon. So when I think of an owl, I think of a number eight. And I did this with a, with a teddy bear last week. So with my finger, there's the head, there's the body, there's the head, there's the body, there's the head, there's the body, there's the head, there's the body. Think of a number eight. So the head of the owl is up here. Make sure you leave room for the body and some tail feathers and some other things. So the head, and the body, the head and the body. So if the head is right about here, the beak must be right about here. So I make a, a letter V, like a small letter V right there. Yep. And then we're gonna make it, uh, an upside down letter U on top of that. Looks like a little ice cream cone. Put some nostrils on your ice cream. <laughs> Never eat an ice cream that has nostrils. It's disgusting. It's not a new Ben and Jerry's flavor. And then some kid at a school told me to look like an alien. It's an alien nostril ice cream cone. On each side of your alien nostril ice cream cone, you can make a letter U, small letter U, and a small letter U right there. It's an alien nostril ice cream cone with ponytails or a mustache. Some kid at a school told me to look like a steer skull. Now what That's we're going to do is we're going to make lines that kind of float out like this. And these are not wings. But they're gonna, one's gonna kind of go out this way, one's gonna kind of go out this way. So we're gonna make a line that goes this way and a line that goes this way, kind of floating, a little bit up, but not knocking things off my wall. A uh, little, little up, but not way up. And then the corner where your letter U and your little line meet, we'll make a line that goes out like this and out like this. What is that thing? It looks like a flying nostril ice cream cone alien creature. But if you really look at it, it's an owl with its eyes tightly closed. Can you see it now? An owl with its eyes tightly closed. So you want to wake up the owl. You put a semicircle or letter U underneath. And then another semicircle inside that. And like I was telling kids last week, you always want to leave a little highlight on the eye. So when you color in the pupil, make a little white circle there and color around it. Then it kind of looks shiny. I'll do the same over here in the same spot. There's my little owl ice cream cone, nostril ice cream cone thing floating in space. So I'll give everybody a chance to catch up here. Let me scroll down here, see what people are saying. Okay, so now uh, this is going to be a horned owl. And the horned owls, as you know, they have feathers that kind of curve up like this. So from the end of these like eyebrow things, we're going to make a little zigzagging line going up, zigzag going up, a little zigzag going up, just a little bit, just like a little zigzagging feathery line that goes up. And then we're going to go to the top of each one of these and we're going to slide down a hill and above the letter U, you're going to fall in a hole, but don't, don't go all the way in and touch the other part. Slide down a hill and fall in a hole. So we're going to go to slide down a hill, fall in a hole. Slide down a hill, fall in a hole. And don't touch them together. And you want to make the top of the owl's head. I think of it as a bridge a bridge from one side to the other, kind of a little bumpy bridge. It's gonna go up and down. So bumpy, 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 and down like that. There's your top of the owl's head. 
Ralphie. Yeah. While kids are catching up, I wanted to show you this. When I yeah. was in Ireland, I had a barn owl. There he is right there. Oh, see that's him? awesome. I had a barn owl on my hand. See him? That's so and you cool. You know how they have a really strange looking face? I love barn owls. I never knew what the face was. Do you realize why he has a strange face? No. His face is a radar. You're kidding me. No, his face is a radar. It look at it. It uh, picks it's up a like, uh, ground movement. Like he can, he picks up the vibration of a mouse or a rat or a wow. lizard on the ground because yeah, his face. Animals, is birds, nature face, is absolutely incredible. Perfectly shaped to be like a radar or a sonar. It's like a dish. It's like a yeah. radar dish. Look at wow. when you look at his face up close. Look. So I never knew today, that. Ralph is drawing, but you learned a little thing. Look at his face. That is cool. It's like a radar dish. Yeah. There's, okay, some, so Marvel, there's some Marvel character that someone made up that has a face like a, an owl. That's cool. So, so this is um, this, this, um, the owls have the feathers around the eyes, like in the bar, barn owl there. So, right at the letter U, you're going to make a zigzagging line going around and tuck underneath the eyebrow. Zigzag around. And tuck under the eyebrow, zigzag around, and tuck under the eyebrow. And then uh, at the top of these feathers, we're gonna zigzag down to the side of the head, zigzag to the side of the head, zigzag to the side of the head, kind of make them feathery looking. And by the way, if I go too fast, you can always rewatch this on YouTube. Um, if you're having trouble keeping up with the speed I draw, uh, definitely later on, check out the YouTube link. Jerry, you'll put that up, right? The, the YouTube link will be up on your page and up on your, on your Twitter account, on your Facebook page, um, and wherever else. So right here on the sides of the cheeks, we're going to make a little zigzag line going down, just a little bit, zigzag down, zigzag down, like a little feather thing, zigzag down. And then you can make the neckline because owls, they can turn their heads all the way around, make their neckline, make it uh, kind of zigzaggy, feathery. I don't make it perfect. You see, it's not a perfect zigzag. Now you have an owl's head floating in space. It's the adventure of space owl head. That make a great book, Jerry. <laughs> Adventures of space owl head. So now we're going to go in a little bit. Ralphie. Side. Yeah. Ralphie, Chloe says... An owl is my favorite animal. There you go. Awesome. That's from Chloe. Awesome. And Eliana says, could you please draw a UFO? We're going to draw an alien uh, next after this. So, yeah. All right. All right. So we're going to go in a little bit on each side here. And we're going to make a line that goes out and then down a little bit. So it can kind of go out and then down a little bit. This one's going to go out and then down a little bit. Don't connect them together. Don't bring them way in close because it's going to be the body. And the, the shoulders, the wings are going to be pulled in. The wings are going to be folded up. So you're going to make like a, a skinny heart shape right here. Half of a heart shape. Half of a heart shape right there. And half of a heart shape right there. So you see a little bit of bump of the shoulder as the wings are folding up over the back. And as you know, owls have talons. And normally they'll, they'll hold branches with two in the front and two in the back. So we're going to have right at the bottom here, we're going to make an oval and an oval. And right here, we're going to have an oval and an oval. So two ovals together. Those are going to be like the talons wrapping around a branch or a telephone line or something. So I would make a, a branch. You want to have like two lines going up and touching right there and then coming out and touching those and coming out the other side. You can use just regular parallel lines if you want, but you can make like a branch, could have like sticks sticking out. So it goes through the hand or through the talon and it's gonna come out here. And you could like split it off at the end or something. So it's on a branch. You can make some little lines that indicate knuckles if you want. 
Then I do the tail feathers by making a line that goes out this way and out this way and then wiggle around. So it's gonna go out and out and then wiggle down and wiggle back up. And just to kind of make it look like there are feathers there, I'll put some lines there and letter V's on the chest to kind of indicate a feather pattern. So you take your time, you could actually make a real feather pattern on there. So there you have the owl. Now what I like to do is I like to fill up the page, maybe I put a, a cloud behind it and uh, maybe a cloud. There's another cloud hiding behind there. And maybe there's a moon hiding behind there, owl moon. And there you have your owl. And remember to sign your artwork, Ralph Macaroni and Cheese. How'd you do, Jerry? Your mic shut off, Jerry. Your mic's off. I'm sorry, Ralphie, I forgot the tail. Yeah. Yeah, do the tail. How'd I do? Let's see. Yeah, he, that one looks like he's looking at something, like he's looking at something over to the side. Like he's it's looking at something that he's gonna attack. He's looking at Connor. No, he's <laughs> looking at Cameron. No, he's looking at Mary Alice. All right, so now we're gonna do an alien. Get you not. By the way, Ralph, yeah. by the way, Ralph, you're a natural teacher. You are a natural teacher. Well, Jerry, you know, we we who, how, many, how many schools have we been to? You know, Connor really. says Ralph looks like a guy from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Why? Because I'm I'm round like the panda. Cameron says my owl looks like a wet dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it fun. Okay, really so fun. we're gonna do a goofy alien. This is not really from my alien book, but elements of it are in my alien book. And we're gonna start with a circle in the middle of our paper and the body's gonna be here. So with your finger again, figure out where the center is, make a circle. There's the head of the alien, the body's gonna be down here, some legs are gonna be down here, some things are gonna be up here, so leave room. So we're gonna make the circle right here in the middle. I'm gonna grab a marker and I'm gonna make a circle. It doesn't have to be a good circle. That's not a really great circle, but Close enough. So it's gonna be a big head, tiny body. It's gonna be like a, a bobblehead alien. Kind of like me, a big bobblehead. <laughs> At the bottom of your circle, for the neck, you gotta make a skinny letter U. Looks like a lollipop. It's a lollipop alien. It's delicious. I would have read the book about the floating owl head in space. The Adventures of Space Owl. Markham Rosenberg, Markham said, I, I would have read the uh, the book about the floating owl head in space. Maybe I'll have to make a, 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 a The Adventures of Space Owl. <laughs> yes. Space <that's> owl head. <laughs> okay, now for shoulders. I'm gonna make like an upside down letter U. It's gonna go up, it's gonna touch the neck, and it's gonna come down. So make an upside down letter U. Right there, there's the little alien shoulders. And the body is actually gonna be a letter C, but you're gonna turn the letter C, here comes the letter C, you're gonna turn it sideways. So, you're gonna turn, so letter C is gonna flip this way. So make a, a letter C, right there's a belly. And just like I did uh, last week, I'll put a, a belly button on that. And you can put anything you want on there. You can put a dress on it. You can put some pa sh short pants on it. I always put underpants on mine. There's uh, Captain Alien Underpants. Captain Alien Underpants. So I just make two lines going this way and two lines this way and two lines this way for the underpants. But you can do whatever you want. And like I was doing with the, uh, I forgot which one I did. Uh, this was last time, a little baby monster. Um, I'm going to make a t-shirt. So I make a letter U for the collar. And then this t-shirt shrunk in the dryer, go up and then down. And you've got to put your sleeves on your t-shirt. So those are kind of like rectangles sticking out. There's my little t-shirt. And we're not going to do the legs. And we're not going to do the arms yet. We're going to go up into the sky here. And you can make as many of these as you want. I'm going to make a circle and a circle and a circle. 
those are going to be the eyeballs. And it's up to you to decide how you're going to connect your eyeballs to the body. Um, it could be two wiggly lines. It could just be simple lines. It could be electricity holding it up. This one, I'm going to do two lines like this. And then a third line, kind of way out here. And put some ovals in here. So that would be like an octopus tentacle, something holding up that eyeball. The next one could just be two simple lines, but maybe it's a flower. Make whatever you want. It could be held up by spaghetti, I don't know. This one's gonna be more mechanical. So I make a loop that goes out and a circle on the end, and then a loop with a circle there, a loop with a circle there, and then I'll finish it up by putting two lines here. So that one's like, robotic and moves up and down. So choose whatever way you want to put your alien eyeballs on there. For the eyeballs, I'm gonna make us an oval and an oval and an oval. And I'm gonna make the uh, iris and the pupil. So you're gonna make like a semicircle there and maybe a semicircle or a full circle there. And remember, leave the white spot on that. This one might be looking over this way. So a semicircle hiding there and a semicircle hiding there. And remember, leave the white spot on that eye. So that eye's moving around. If you want a sleepy eye, you make the eyelid hanging down and then a semicircle underneath, a semicircle underneath and leave a white spot on that one. That one's kind of sleepy. So this one's like more wide awake. This one's like kind of angry looking off at something. And that one's kind of sleepy. You can put some eyelashes on there if you like. Oh, pretty, it's so adorable. Put some eyelashes on there. And uh, this could have a, this could be a gigantic mouth if you want, but I'm gonna put a mouth right here. Hi. And a mouth right here. Hi. This one's grouchy. And it's crying. <laughs> <laughs> make your own expressions on them now you can have ears and i like to use like a letter c and then a backwards letter c letter c backwards letter c letter c backwards letter c and because your ears curl over the top you can make like a little line going up like this and 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 like this So the fun thing is, are you going to put horns on its head? Are you going to have antenna? Um, you could have whatever you want. On this one, I'm going to do a, like a, a loop and an upside down letter U. It's going to be a little baseball hat. I'm going to put a letter B because we're from where, Jerry? Where are we from? Your mic is shut off, Jerry. Boston, right? So that's the Red Sox. So you, you guys that don't like the Red Sox, you can put your whatever you want in there. This one might be a fuzzy hat. Am I on now? This one, yep, you're on now. This one's got horns. Boston and, Red Sox. And this is a, a Viking helmet. And this one's sad because it's pretty cold today here in uh, central Massachusetts. It was only 34 degrees this morning. So this one's still wearing its elf hat. Down here. You can make a swirling vortex of uncertainty, <laughs> or you can make a big mouth here. You can have a whole giant mouth of teeth around it. One kid at a school was really creative, made this into um, a, a fish tank and had like fish swimming by and bubbles and seaweed and a treasure chest and everything. But uh, I'm just gonna make a big smiley face sideways, maybe a tongue sticking out. The nose- Hey Rob. Yeah. Mike Scholas uh, has come on and he said he is not an alien. Oh, no, he is. He's definitely an alien. I've met him. I know him. I've talked to him. He's definitely an alien. Okay, so right here, now I, I'm going to put an eyeball right here, a circle and a circle and a circle. And this one is actually going to have like goggles on. Um, don't tell uh, Disney or whoever made it. It's a minion. No, it's, a, it's not a minion. Now you could have whatever you want for ears. Maybe you could make big ears here if you want. But I like to do triangles sticking out, little triangles sticking out. 
And then I put puppy ears on it, <laughs> or it looks like tongues. Maybe there's tongues sticking out of its head. So it's like letter, letter V's or triangles and then letter U's. I'll make some lines on these too. Looks like tongue sticking out of its head, doesn't it, Jerry? Yeah. Now you decide what kind of feet you want on yours. Uh, you could do- I want duck feet. You could have duck feet on yours. You could have chicken feet. You could have jet engines coming out of the bottom. I'm gonna do skinny legs sticking out. I'm gonna have two lines going this way, two lines going this way. I'm gonna put a little kneecap on mine. A couple lines going down. And the ankle. That one looks like it's got a broken leg. And then uh, I'm gonna do some fuzzy slippers. And it's got fuzzy tails. And it's got bunny ears. And bunny legs. These are the weirdest bunnies ever. Not very anatomically correct looking bunnies. Uh, a little triangle for a nose, a little eyeball. That's a weird looking bunny. A little triangle nose, a little eyeball, a little bunny eyeball here, a little mouth. It's got real bunnies for legs, Jerry. Oh my In God. one of my past sessions, I, I showed how to make lobster claws. I'm gonna make hairy arms coming out of mine. You can have whatever you want, I have hairy arms. Looks like a pickle. Pickle arms. But I do lobster claws and for the big crusher pinch or crusher claw or cruncher claw, make a line that goes up and then down a hill, goes over a hill and curves around, it goes only about halfway back. You have a lot of muscle right there. Then it goes this way and then in. So it goes over a hill, back about halfway, then down and then in. I know I'm going really fast, but you can rewatch this. We want to make sure we have enough do enough drawings so everybody gets a lot of drawings to be able to, to play around with later. So here's the like the, the thumb. You make a line that curves up like this, kind of goes out, curves up a little bit and make it a little bumpy. This is your uh, cruncher claw, right, Jerry? Yeah. And then we want the more, the pinchy claw, the pincher one, the, the scissors, scissors claw, is that what that one's called? Yeah. Okay, so this one's over hill and downhill. Over you know what a kid downhill. told me? What? Your mic is off again. <laughs> it's a what? smasher and a ripper. A smasher and a ripper. Okay, so this is a ripper claw. This, this goes down and a little bit of a point on the end. And then you're gonna again go about halfway back, then go down and then in. And this one's gonna go up to a point. And this has little pointy things inside here too. So there's your pincher claw and your your cruncher claw, your crusher claw. I like to put a little dental work on that one. You put some little bristles on it. You know, uh, if you look at lobsters, they have bristles on them, bristly hairs. Right, Jerry? Yeah, great. So now you could add things like you could have bat wings on here. I'm going to put some fairy wings on mine. Yeah. You could have it on a planet. Make a line that goes up, goes behind there, and goes maybe uh, goes down. You could have mountains on your planet. Maybe there's some stars in the sky. Sometimes when I'm at schools, I, I put a moon. Oh, it looks, it's got hearts too. It's romantic. Ralphie? Yeah. I think this creature is gonna take over the planet. That's awesome. Good job, Jerry. I think it's gonna take over the planet. I, 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 think, I think you're working on taking over the illustrator's jobs. <laughs> okay, so now craters are ovals on their side. So make a crater out of an oval and you go up a hill and downhill on the other side. Up a hill, touch the side, go downhill on the other side. So make an oval, up a hill on one side, downhill on the other side. You know, oval, up a hill, downhill. You could even have things sticking out of, the, out of them. Like there's maybe a creature in this one. And for those of you that saw me draw the little baby monster, I'm going to do this. This was never a belly button. This was always an eyeball. <laughs> and there's that one. There's your alien drawing. <laughs> and I'll sign my name down here. Jerry Pallotta. I mean, Ralph Bassiello, 2020. Good going, Ralphie.
How much time do we have, Jerry? You got time to at least do another one. Go. Okay. You want to do the dragon? Yeah, can, do a dragon. Okay, we can do, I can do a sea dragon. Did I do a sea dragon with one of the other groups? No. Okay, so this is actually going to be in one of my books. I'll do a sea dragon uh, or sea serpent. And uh, I'll start by making some water with a blue dragon. Well, the other one was the, uh, the winged horse with the mermaid tail. Oh, you want me to do the Pyro Campus? I don't know. Whatever you want to do. I got these all labeled here. So the, this is okay. So this is octopus. This was going to be dragon. Um, if I have time, I'll go back to these. All right. All right so, so the winged mer horse. Now this is. I'm going to show you what it looks like. A winged mer horse. It's called a Taro Campus. A Taro Campus is not going to be easy, folks. So we can do that one, which is more difficult, or we could do a uh, sea dragon. Mike Shoulder says he is not an alien. Mike, yes, you are an alien. I've met you. I know you. You're you're out there like Pluto. The kids are saying sea dragon. All right, let's do the sea dragon. It, it is easier. Um, uh, let me pull this back here because I got them labeled. Ralphie, you know what you could do to close up today? What? Why don't you really fast do the horse mermaid with wings? All right, I'll do Not that right. after after I do this. I'll do the I'll do the really campus. Yeah. They can follow that one later. Okay, so this is going to be, um, and that was actually going to be an octopus. So we'll uh, we'll wait on that one if we have time. So this is this dragon. Whoops, this dragon sea dragon we're gonna make some water going across the bottom so make some kind of water this will be be a kind of simple one but you can actually make this one really detailed afterwards we're gonna start off pretty simple but it can be really really detailed if you, if you work at it so here comes your sea serpent going through the water dun, 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 it's gonna go up and down up and down and out of the water on the left hand side of your paper coming up out of the water curve out and then over like this. It's going to be like half of a heart shape that kind of points this way. So it's going to Come go around. Line. Come on line. And then down under the water. This is going to be the neck of the sea serpent. Make sure you leave room for the humps going back here. So you got half of a, a half of a heart shape or uh, some kid at school told me it looked like a question mark. It's swimming punctuation. Punctuation went for a swim one day. So now we're gonna have another one inside of it. So don't touch them together and make another one inside of it. And then make another one inside of that one. So you have three of them. This one's kind of closer to the other one. The head will be here, but I'm not gonna do that one yet. So you have like three lines going around and into the water. Exactly, Jerry. Okay. Now that's gonna go underwater, those three lines. Go under, imagine they go under and they come back up and back down, back up and back down. So upside down letter U, 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 upside down letter U. And this is one I do at schools all the time. And then those three lines, they can come up out of the water and come to a point. So like here's one. Now, if you have trouble making them come to a point, you can actually start at the point and go down into the water. So there's one, there's two, and then there's the third line going under the water. Later on, we can add a tail on there. So you got the two humps and the tail sticking up out of the water. And when you guys are ready, we'll do the head. Now, I like to go skiing, but this is kind of a steep hill for me to be skiing. I'm getting kind of old now. I don't want to fall off a cliff here. So I want to go down this way. So I'm going to ski out this way and then, oh, no, I fell off a cliff. So I'm going to ski out this way and then, oh, no, I fell off a cliff. So I'm going to ski out this way and then, ah. Again, now your jawbone goes down. If you feel your jawbone, you can feel your ear. Your jawbone goes down and then goes forward, down and forward. So you can make your jawbone right here for your sea serpent go down. And then go forward about the same length as the top of the head. So this is the upper part of the head. This is going to be the lower lower part of the head, the jaw. So you're going to go down and then forward. 
about the same length as up above and make a little bit of a chin right there. And the mouth is gonna be like a letter V on its side right here. So the letter V is gonna be on its side. I might even make this a longer point, might go down a little further and a letter V on the side. And you could actually make a smile on it or something like, hi, how you doing? Nice to see you. Make a happy one or an angry sea dragon. Now decide what kind of teeth you want to put in this mouth. They could be curved teeth. They could be, um, they could be rounded. You could have one teeth, you got braces. It could be old, it could just have gums, like a teeth fell out. I'm gonna have curved teeth like, kind of like a moray eel, their teeth curve inwards. Jerry, can you tell the kids why uh, moray eels teeth curve inwards? Uh, they, am I on live? Yeah, you're on. All right, they curve inwards because when they capture an animal, the animal cannot get away. Because they're curved it's like hooks and the animal it, pulls away, they actually get hooked they more. Curve the other way, they would just escape and slide yeah, off. Just slide right off. By the way, Lynette Richaud says, Ralph is exactly what I needed today. Thank you, Lynette. Oh, be a country song. Right. Oh, exactly <laughs> what I needed today. Okay, so I put a nostril hey, here. We're all quarantined. We're all isolated. You know, it is fun to watch Ralph. Okay, so we an oval with a like a fill in the oval here. Now we can. I'm going to do an, an angry eye, but you don't have to make it angry. I like to make my sea serpent a little bit angry. We're all, you know, cloistered in our or quarantined in our homes or our apartments. So I'm a little angry. So I'm gonna make a line. Now I could do it big here, but I'm gonna do it right here so you, so you guys can see it actually on the side of the face. We're gonna start walking this way. We're gonna to get to a hill, climb up a hill. We're gonna look over the top of the hill, but we're not gonna go down the other side. So you walk along, climb up a hill, really steep hill, go over the top, but don't go down the other side. That's gonna be the eyebrow, the angry eyebrow. Underneath your eyebrow, you're going to put a semicircle. Tuck a semicircle in there. Now it's looking kind of angry, right? Now you could do a circular pupil, but I want to make a viper pupil, which is a letter V. Right here, the pupil is going to be like a letter V. And I want to color this one in, but leave a big white spot on there so it can look shiny. Is my angry sea serpent or angry sea dragon. Questions for Ralph, if you don't do the copyright symbol, can somebody really take your work as their own? Um, a copyright lasts you, your life plus 50 years and they can they, they can actually, um, uh, you can actually reapply your, your estate and reapply for copyright. So uh, do you, if you don't do the copyright symbol, can somebody really, well, you have to prove that your work is yours. That's why we register our copyrights. Um, you could also take a photograph of your artwork and mail it to you yourself, registered mail. Now it's stamped by the Postal Service and you don't open it. So now it's a sealed document by the Postal Service. So it's kind of like poor man's copyright registration, sending yourself a, a letter. Well, yeah. I love it when illustrators morph into aliens and then into lawyers. <laughs> Well, you know, you got to write it. a book about it. You got to do what you, you know, got to do. <laughs> okay, so well, now the fun part is what are you going to do with the rest of Then it becomes a lawyer. Go ahead. So some kids, I, I've been at schools and kids come up with great ideas. A girl at a school thought these looked like islands. She drew palm trees growing out of the islands and she had mermaids having a dance party on the island. Another kid thought it was a roller coaster. He drew a roller coaster going down and roller coaster was flying off. All the people flying out of the back. I'm like, I'm never going on that roller coaster ride. Another kid put an alien spaceship on the top of its head. And inside this, he took away the pupil. He had a little alien with a steering wheel steering it. But I got to tell you, my favorite, and I don't like to say I have favorites, but this one had to be my favorite. A kid drew a giant iceberg growing out of the top of its head. And on its back, he had the Titanic broken in half. And the kid actually wrote a story of how the Titanic was not hit, uh, did not hit an iceberg. It was hit by a sea serpent disguised as an iceberg and it sunk the Titanic. So the kid actually made up a story. So that kid actually inspired another kid in his class and another kid moved the water up here. And above the water, the kid had a pirate ship. And the, the pirate ship was above the water, 
below the water, the hull of the ship was actually the top of the sea serpent's head and it went down and into a cave. So you can be really creative, but you could do uh, simple things like these spiky things. You know, some kids like to have these spiky things. I like to do like a little fish fin on the top of its head, maybe a seaweed beard hanging down. And maybe a tongue sticking out, Bleh! And these spiky things here. You can do whatever you want on yours. And you can have a ball with spikes on the end for the tail. You can have a monkey hanging from a branch. You can have a pirate flag on the end. I like to do like a fish fin, fish tail, a fluke. Oh, look, it's a merpent. It's a mermaid serpent. But wait a second, I'm gonna do this. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And spiral line. It's a unimerpent. This is actually going to be in my unicorn drawing book, which is my next book in the series. So I actually started this a couple of years ago, drawing this sea serpent. And one kid at school said, put a unicorn horn on it. So I thought, okay, I'll put a unicorn horn on it. And now it's actually going to be in my unicorn drawing book. Um, and I think- Ralph, I have... you, Hey, Ralph, you might've invented a new creature. A, a unicorn. Who knows? I want to share. I'm going to share uh, share my screen with you guys for a second. If I can find what uh, I'm going to find something here. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Share my screen. Hold on one second. Yipes! Now we're going to minimize that. I don't know if you guys can can still see me there. That's my. We can email. see. We don't want that. We don't want that. Um, hold on one second. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, stop share. No. Can you guys see my, my computer desktop? Yep. Okay. Now I got to find this thing. Hold on. I got something to show you. So this is uh that's actually my new book, but here's a little video of me drawing a uh, flying unipig. <laughs> this is a flying unipig. Yeah, it's just a rough sketch. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, I like I clean it. I'm cleaning it up there, but that's that's gonna be kind of what the flying unipig is gonna look like. What do you think of that? Yeah. And then uh, you want to see one more? This is gonna be the. This is a unicorn, but this is me just me just sketching it out. Yeah. So this will be in the unicorn drawing book. Yeah. So you can see. Can you get, can you see me actually drawing it? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm drawing this on my iPad uh, with an Apple Pencil using an app called Procreate. And a lot of you that know David Bedricki, he works on an iPad with uh, the Procreate app. And uh, he kind of talked me into to using it uh, for my books. And I found it to be a really nice tool. So that's not a, a finished uh, illustration, obviously. But that's kind of kind of be where, where hey, that's- Hey, Ralphie, can I teach one lesson? Sure. Uh, you kids drew an owl, right? You drew an owl. Did you know that owls really have skinny legs? Look, a lot of people never notice this. Look, how do you like that? They look like my when legs. People owls, <laughs> when people see owls, they never see their legs. Look, that's pretty cool. Legs. pretty cool. Yeah. How do you like that? That's awesome. Now, don't forget to sign your name here on your on your artwork too. And uh, do you want me to do the Tarot Campus really quickly and? Yeah, do it really fast, and All then right. we'll end the show. We'll wrap it up. Yeah. Okay, so again, the, the Tarot Campus is at the beginning of the Mystic Files Beast book, which is uh, the biggest book I've ever really illustrated. That one's written by Stephanie Brockway, and you can find that online. It's spelled P-H-Y-L-E-S, Mystic Files. Okay, so... Uh, this this thing is like a horse's head, and it's got a body, and it's got a tail. And I use a lionfish for the wings of this thing. So I make like a little bump. Now you guys probably won't be able to follow along with this because I'm gonna do it pretty fast. So I make a little bump right there, and then I'm gonna go out and make the lips, and there's the chin, and then the jaw. Yeah. And uh, I make this curve around here. I'm gonna have some gills here, so it's got gills, and I'm gonna make a little waving line there. Remember that eyeball I did with the sea serpent thing? I kind of do something like that there. And like a nose, I'll put some teeth in there. And it's it's kind of like a horse. So the back of the head, I'm gonna go down and then down and then down. 
we'll make like a line that goes this way and a line that goes this way. And then uh, the ears of the horse, kind of like there. This is gonna be like the mane. I'm gonna have some wavy mane here. And this will be wavy mane too. But I wanna do like these spiky things on the back. So I'm not gonna put any mane in there yet. Um, leg gonna go out, there's the elbow. This is gonna be kind of tough cause it's not gonna really fit. There's a leg, a hoof, a hoof. And that's a skinny leg, so I'm gonna make it like fatter. And uh, I'm gonna have some fins on here too. And yeah. maybe this leg goes up and goes down. You can't really see that one there. A little main thing, or not main thing, a little fin there. And then I'm gonna have a line going up and it's gonna have barbs on it. So I'm gonna go like this like fingers, five fingers, one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna make a little wavy thing in there, 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 and then this is gonna go in. And the so body. So use the lionfish as the model for the wings on the horse. Yeah, use the lionfish for that. The oh, lionfish, right. yeah. And uh, let's uh, add some things here. You can actually see the other side, the other, the other wing here. And uh, make a line going down like that. The body's gonna kind of go around. Now this one's gonna go like this. And the, the tail, get a little tight for space here. Markram says, I love lionfish. I do too. I like to put some scales in here too. Maybe some scales. And I'll put some lines on here. Put some scales on this thing. What's the real name of this creature? Taro campus. I'll spell it up here. Uh, let me do some more main here. It's a P T E R O C A M P U S. It's a very horse. rare mythological that creature. Horse? I'm sorry, Jerry. Taro campus. Does that mean flying horse? Oh, I don't know exactly. I, it, campus, I think, means horse, but I don't know what. Taro, I think, is flying, right? Like yeah. the pterodactyl. Yeah, campus it might mean horse. It might be mean flying horse. Um, I like to add some fin some fins on this thing too. So, like, you can just change it up. Okay, so I did that really fast. So it's kind of like a it's kind of like a mess. Hey, that's fabulous. Hey, everybody, our our time's up. Ralph, you're fantastic. It's so much fun to be working with you again, and. Uh, from what you did today, I have a great book idea. I'm going to call you about it. Okay. I'll I'll hey, before they go, I, I don't know if I showed this. So I also draw uh, with charcoal sometimes. This is a charcoal pencil drawing. You did that? It looks yeah, like Santana is. That's a charcoal drawing. Um, this is an old one I did. Addy says you did well. You did good. Desiree says one. please stay on. Well, we can't, we can't stay on forever, Desiree. Desiree. That's a charcoal and, uh, drawing, but if I flip it upside down, it's a glass top table with, with uh, flip it upside down again. This is the way I, I like it. Yeah. But if you flip it upside down, it's a glass top table with some wow. plants on it. Uh, Markham says, "Let Ralph, what's your last name? I'm going to follow you on Facebook. Ralph Massiello. I-E-L-L-O. Ralph Massiello. Messi Jello. Is that correct? Mary Massey Alice, yeah. Ralph Mary Alice Massey. has got my name there. Yep. I would love to see your drawings, guys. If you if you have a chance to post your drawings, I'd love to see your drawings. We'll um, share the drawings once we're done going live. Are you guys ready to end? Yeah, we're re we're done. We yeah, I, I, if you could leave it up so I could read the read the comments and stuff, that would be great. But I want to thank everybody for uh tuning in today. And, uh, Sorry to rush you, but we already went an hour, Ralph. It seemed like 10 minutes. I know. I know when I visit schools, they usually give me like 45 minutes to an hour, and I could I could spend two hours with kindergarten kids just, just drawing shapes and stuff. And, um, yeah, somebody asked, are you guys going to, to be on tomorrow? Yes, 11 o'clock East Coast time. But I'm not yeah. going to be. J Jerry's going to be on. Somebody else yeah, is going to be on. I'm going with 
Mike Shoulders, Mike Gartell, uh, Steve Swinburne, and a special guest that nobody knows about yet. Is it, a, is it alien Mike Shoulders? Uh, I can't say. <laughs> Mike Shoulders will be dressed as an alien. He's going to be wearing wings. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. See you Thanks, later. Everybody. Thanks for coming on. I love the Tarot Campus. Thanks, Jerry.